Devotion number 20, A Supernatural Birth. Genesis 21, verses 1 through 7. The birth of Isaac. Now the Lord was gracious to Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah what he had promised. Sarah became pregnant and bore a son to Abraham in his old age, at the very time God had promised him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to the son Sarah bore him. When his son Isaac was eight days old, Abraham circumcised him, as God commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Sarah said, God has brought me laughter, and everyone who hears about this will laugh with me. And she added, who would have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children? Yet I have borne him a son in his old age. This verse pictures the joy of fulfillment. At last, we have two sons of Abraham living side by side, Isaac and Ishmael. We do not need to wonder what this means in the life of faith, because in Galatians 4, Paul tells us. He says that Isaac is a picture of that which is born of the Spirit, and Ishmael is a picture of that which is born of the flesh. Isaac is the result of a life controlled by the Spirit. What does that mean to us? In that same letter he tells us, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Galatians 5, verses 22 through 23. These are the Isaacs for which we have been waiting. Ishmael, on the other hand, stands for the works of the flesh that are outlined in that very same chapter. Notice how that is confirmed in this passage. First, Isaac's birth was supernatural. He was not born until Abraham and Sarah had reached an advanced age. Sarah was 90 years old, and Abraham was 100. It occurred at the set time, some 30 years after God had first promised to give Abraham a son. In Romans chapter 4, verse 19, Paul refers to this time and says, without weakening in his faith, he faced the fact that his body was as good as dead, since he was about a hundred years old, and that Sarah's womb was also dead. This was a supernatural birth, where God quickened the natural processes again and a child was born. Do you see now why God waited all this long time to fulfill the promise to Abraham? He was waiting until the ability and forces of natural man had ceased so his promise could be a supernatural fulfillment. This is exactly what God says to us about the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. It will never come from the flesh. It will never come from self-effort or by positive thinking or by perpetual trying. Love, joy, and peace, those wonderful gifts of God, never come from any attempt on our part to imitate them. You can imitate them, but they will never be anything but an imitation. You cannot produce the fruit of the Spirit by the flesh because that fruit is the supernatural gift from the life lived in the power of the Spirit of God, born as Isaac was here. Lord, I see both Isaac and Ishmael within me, produce in me those Isaac-like qualities that I cannot generate in myself. Life Application Are we trying our best to imitate the nourishing and life-giving fruit that can be produced only by God's Spirit? Do we see the difference between trying and trusting? Join us for this series. Sunday 10.30 a.m. Hope Church Tulsa, 